Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to solve a three equation, three unknown type of problem. This is what we call a system of linear equations. Each equation represents a plane in the XYZ coordinate system. And of course, we're looking for the one point where all three planes meet. And that's usually the case where there's one single point in space that has an X, Y, and Z value, an X, Y, and Z coordinate value, where the, two pl where the three planes meet, which is the solution to this particular problem. Now, in this example, there will be an infinite number of solutions, meaning there will be more than one point. Matter of fact, there will be an infinite number of points where the planes can meet. And so what that means typically is that two planes could be coincident with a third plane cutting through that, or we could have a situation where planes simply intersect instead of at one location, they intersect at the same location multiple times over. And so what we're going to see here is when we use the method of Gaussian elimination, how that appears when we go through the process of trying to solve it using that particular method and what it looks like when we have an infinite number of solutions. So again, what we do with, with this is we convert that into the augmented matrix, which means we take the coefficients for x, y, and z, so that's minus 3, minus 5, 36, and then we augment that with the numbers to the right side of the equal signs. In this case, that would be 10, so minus 1, 0, 7, 5, and then we have a 1, 1, minus 10, and minus 4. So this should have an infinite number of solutions, so let's find out. First of all, we want to start up and say, well, we want this to be a 1. We could take that row and divide the whole row by negative 3 to accomplish that, but that already would induce, right from the very first step, fractions, and that's not something that's easy to work with. So instead, we're going to interchange row 3 and row 1 to get the 1 over here, to be over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to exchange row 1 and row 3 positions and that will already take care of the fact that we want a 1 in the upper left corner. So this becomes a 1, a 1, a minus 10, and a minus 4. The second row remains in its place. And then the third row comes down here to minus 3, minus 5, 36, and 10. So we accomplished the first thing by having a 1 right up here, and now we're going to use that 1 to get rid of the negative 1 here and to get rid of the negative 3. The way we do that is we take the second row that it contains the negative 1 and replace it by the negative of that number, which is the positive 1, times the row with the 1 in it, R1, and adding it to R2. And to get rid of the negative 3 down there, we do the same thing. We take the negative of this number, so we take row 3, will be replaced by the negative of that number, which is a positive 3, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R1, and adding it to R3. When we do those two operations, these will be zeros. Of course, we have to find out what these other numbers are over there. All right, our matrix now becomes the following matrix. So what does not change? Well, the first row doesn't change, so we write a 1, a 1, a negative 10, and a negative 4. The next row, well, this will become a 1. The way that works is we take a positive 1 times our 1, so 1 times 1, and add the negative 1, that becomes a 0. 1 times 1 is 1, add it to 0, this becomes a 1. 1 times a negative 10 is a negative 10, add it to 7 is a minus 3. And a 1 times a negative 4 is a negative 4, add it to 5 gives me a positive 1. Okay, now we do the same with the third row. 3 times 1 is 3, add it to negative 3, gives me 0. 3 times 1 is 3, add it to negative 5 is a negative 2. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30, added to 36 gives me a positive 6. And finally, 3 times the negative 4 is a negative 12, added to 10 is a negative 2. So, now we have a 1 up here and zeros there, and now we continue. Now we want to go to the second column, we want this to be a 1, and since it's already a 1, we have, don't have to do anything. So we now use that 1 to get rid of this 1 right here, and to get rid of this negative 2 over here. So we can do that by taking the first row and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a minus 1, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, and adding it to R1. And then we take the negative of this number, so we take R3 and replace it by a positive 2 times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to row 3 to get rid of that negative 2. And let's see what we end up with here. So then the matrix becomes the following. Now, of course, the second row does not change. That's the one with the 1 in it. So 0, 1, negative 3, and 1. This is still a 1, and that's still a 0, because the first column will not change, because we have a 0 in that element right there. OK, so negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 added to 1 is 0. 
negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3, add to negative 10 is a, po is a negative 7. A negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1, add to negative 4 gives me negative 5. All right, now the third row, twice, so we go 2 times 1 is 2, added to negative 2 gives me 0. 2 times a negative 3, that's a negative 6, added to positive 6 gives me 0. And 2 times a 1, that gives me 2, added to negative 2 gives me a 0. Oh, now we have the classic look of something that does not have a solution. Or actually, in this case, it has an infinite number of solutions. So take that back. It has an infinite number of solutions because what this is saying is that 0x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 0. And that makes sense, right? If, x, if I take 0x's, 0y's, and 0z's, and I get 0, well, that means I can have an, any value for x, y, and z, and z, and that would be a correct statement which means that this row right here does not give me any clues, any information, which means I cannot solve the other side because it means that I can use any value for z and it will come out for x and y. In other words, there are an infinite number of solutions. So again, to summarize that, if we end up with 0 equals 0, and that's what the condition is, 0 equals 0, that means that I can plug in any value for z and I can come with, up with a correct value for x and y that will satisfy all three equations, no matter what the value for z is. And because of that, since I can plug in any value for z, I have an infinite number of solutions. Or I could plug in any value for y and get a corresponding value for x and z. Or I can plug in any, any value for x and get a corresponding value for y and z. In other words, an infinite number of solutions, no single solution will satisfy this equation, but an infinite number will. And that's the classic signature when we use the method of Gaussian elimination. And that's how it's done.